You know, we've been been working on this for the last, you know, three, four months. Um, you know, we talked about both what a long-term deal looks like and what a short-term deal looks like. Found that we had more common ground in, in doing the shorter-term deal. And so yesterday, uh, Ben and I talked again most of the afternoon and kind of last night things came together and got it done today. So very happy and excited to get Brock in here and up and going. Seemed like the negotiations were always on track. Did it seem like it was a lot of acrimony in this one? No, no, it was like we, you know, we had good conversation with Ben Hankinson and his group and, um, you know, there's good back and forth, um, you know, and we, we needed to get to a place though that, you know, he felt like he was happy and we felt we were happy and this is where we ended up. What was the key in the end to sort of meeting up with this? Well, I think, you know, these RFAs are looking for shorter term deals. Um, you know, so we, you know, we we looked at trying to do a longer term deal, but at the end of the day, um, you know, I guess doing a shorter term deal puts some responsibility back on him now to come in and have three three good years, and then you know we'll try to get him uh, signed long term after that. Was that the seven year deal that was rumored? That yeah, we talked about uh, you know longer term deals, and then and then a, a bridge deal. Well, you always knew you were probably going to have to. Uh, a bit on the salary cap to get him signed. Uh, how concerned are you or relieved are you? Well, I'm, I'm, right? I'm extremely happy to get him signed today. You know, I think, you know, our, we've been excited through training camp with the new additions that we brought in and, um, you know, but, you know, Travis wants to start practicing the power play and stuff. So I think it was important that this time if we could get something figured out to get him in here and get him into camp. So. Uh, we're excited to get it done. You expect any trouble with the salary cap? No, we can. We got different ways we can figure it out. Whether you know we go into LTI and depending on you know who looks good through camp, and we got different options. How much did you need Brock uh, back now rather than having this continue on? For, uh, well, I th I think it was important for him and for us. Um, you know, training camp, we have a lot of new players this year going into the season. And I think, you know, the fact that we can get, you know, them all in together and start working with each other and, um, to, you know, it helps with the fit of, you know, learning how to play with different players. And I think Travis might uh, start Brock out with Petey and uh, Furland. And, you know, so they're going to have a new route, a new line mate. So, you know, that, that, Getting used to process and playing in exhibition games, I think, is going to go a long way. And and you know, we want him up and going so he's ready for the start of the season. So it was important to we get it done now. Have you talked to him? Yeah, I talked to him this afternoon. He, he's obviously he's very excited. Um, he's been talking to some of the guys and you know, getting a feel for how camp's going and stuff, and wanted to be here. So he's happy. It's it's over. Will he be here tomorrow? Uh, he's flying in tomorrow night, and and then he'll be on the ice Wednesday. Was there ever, what was your concern level the longer that this dragged on into camp? Like, is there a point where you're wondering, is this really going to get done, or were you just pretty confident all along? That well, we we had good communication with Ben and his group the whole time, so I think it was just more trying to figure out, you know, the common ground where you know their group was going to be happy doing a deal, and you know what made sense for us. So. Um, you know, once we, we, you know, figured that part out, then it seemed to go fairly fast. When you wrote down, you know, at the beginning of this, you would have had an ideal number. How close did you get to the number that you were hoping for? Well, thank God it wasn't your number this morning. <laughs> uh, you know, we didn't know. Like, you know, when you go through a negotiation, you know, you look at, you know, what, what it's going to look like long term and then, you know, hopefully, what it's going to, what we can do short term. So, um, you know, so we we're happy with the number. Jim, what uh, what's possible for Brock? He's got full season, the second full season with Elias Pettersson. We saw the chemistry there. You yeah. know, Brock's skill set. I mean, what do you think is possible for Brock Besser? Well, I'm excited. You know, I'm excited. You know, adding Michael Furland and what he's showing this week. 
his, you know, his ability to get in on the forecheck and recover pucks and make plays, make good plays with the puck and with good players and the way Brock shoots it and PD sees the ice, you know, we feel like that could be a real good line for us this year. Even though you weren't able to do a long-term deal, are you still convinced that Brock is a, a long-term piece? For yeah, us? yeah. Like he's, you know, he's one of our core young players that we want to build a team around going forward. How would you evaluate the last few days here for the group that you have been seeing? Yeah, it's it's. I think it's exciting. Um, we have a different. It's a different feel this year. We have more veteran players. Um, you know, I think, you know, the the players that we acquired this summer have really come in, and we have. It seems like a more mature group now. And you know, Tyler Myers has looked really good. You know, uh, so far and. Jordy Ben's been good and Quinn Hughes. So I think we'll have a, a different look from the back end. And uh, JT Miller, it's like he's a good skater, smart player. Um, you know, him and Bo have developed some chemistry here this last few few uh, days. And, you know, so we hope, you know, they continue to develop that and they're a good fit going into the season. Jim, with what we've seen with the second forward market, no bridge deals really have been signed by a star level player since about 2016 with Kucherov. Did sort of the uniqueness of Bo's situation and, and this year all around uh, make this a little bit more difficult? Um, that's a good question. Like I think there's there's more eagerness from I would say from um, the young players to do bridge deals now. I think going forward to you know we got Seattle coming in, into the league and you know in the next couple of years there's going to be the new TV deal and. So I think, you know, it seemed like, you know, the young player now, they, they have a lot of confidence in their game that they're going to produce and, you know, and, and put up the numbers and then get their money when, you know, they, their contracts are up. And was, part, part, was it important to keep the term down to three years as opposed to four? To four we, we, looked, we, we looked at all those options. We talked about all those different things. and. You know, we didn't want to do one or two years because, you know, we got Petey and Quinn Hughes coming up in two years. So that didn't really make sense for us. So, you know, we talked about a three-year deal. We talked about a four-year deal at the end. The three-year deal is, you know, where we could find some common ground and make a deal. It's a seven and a half in that third year. Yes. I mean, is that a manageable number for you guys? That's just the way that those deals are being structured now? Yeah, we, we think it's a manageable number. Um, and at that point, we would like to, you know, sign Brock to a long-term deal, and you know, get him locked in for, you know, uh, when he's like from 24 to or 25 to 32. So uh, it made sense for us. Jim, considering all the other group sort of sort of second contract forwards still unsigned, did getting this done when you did sort of allow you to call your shot as opposed to reacting to decisions from other clubs and players? Um, well. You know, we were more concerned about trying to figure out a deal for our guy. Um, you know, every team has their own internal cap structure that they have a plan for and trying to follow, and we have ours. And, you know, this, when we, we got to numbers that made sense for us, you know, we, we thought we needed to get the deal done and finished, and that's what we did. And last thing is you look at two years for Hughes and, and Patterson, as you said, four for, Bra, uh, four for Bo, three for Brock. Is that a useful staggering from your perspective yeah I think so like we you know these these players now we you know can see them develop here the next couple of years and get a better idea for where they're going to be at and then you know uh, like after they've you know proven themselves and we can get them locked in long term you know in their prime years of their career after tonight's games do you reassign players like we cut your no we're we're bringing everybody to back to Vancouver tonight in both cities and then we're going to talk in the morning